as everybody's starting to come in now, I just want to go ahead and say welcome to the latest episode of the Bluegrass Poker Podcast. I am your host, Blythe Dahlum, a.k.a. BGP2000, a.k.a. Bluegrass Poker. Today, I am joined by a great streamer, one of my personal favorites to watch uh, whenever he's out on the grind. His name is Tom Parsons, better known online as Pred Poker. Welcome. Welcome to the stream. <laughs> yeah, thanks very much. It's, uh, it's my second ever podcast all fun so it's definitely a, a really? privilege and i do thank you for the invite yeah i was looking on i was looking on youtube fun. trying to find some other ones but i couldn't find any on youtube i think so yeah so the one on that i'm on is the poker in the ears one like joe stapleton right and uh hardigan my name's gone like yeah james yeah. um i did because that's whenever i won the the platinum pass and i did the did the uh the podcast with them and won myself like some tickets or something because we did like the super fan quiz and we did it on reservoir dogs or whatever right. and i beat i beat joe in the like the showdown <laughs> it was good fun though like podcasts are fun they're really chill right i remember uh i remember i was on stream the other day talking to you about um about reservoir dogs yeah and how you did that yeah i remember i um i'll i'll, I'll turn my camera around slightly i got my once upon a time in hollywood poster right up Ooh. above my computer yeah, we went and saw it in, in cinemas. I think I've seen it once more otherwise. Yeah. Hi, hey, Connor. Me too. Connor's in the chat. Welcome, Connor. Welcome, everybody else. Um, right now, uh, as we're getting started, I wanted to ask you about your journey in poker, really how you got started, and what led you to start uh, streaming your yourself playing tournaments and whatever on Twitch. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I started, t like, poker generally because of Twitch. So I've had a Twitch account for pretty much as long as Twitch has been around. And I like always just like loved games as a kid, always played video games day and night. Uh, then it was maybe three, two and a half, three years ago. I was just on Twitch, same as usual, watching some streamers, playing some games. And I saw on the homepage that the Poker Stars stream was on and they were streaming one of the EPTs. And I was like, oh, cool. I know that poker is a thing, but because we've got no live poker here, no casinos here, it's just not like in like fashion nobody really knows about it nobody really plays and i thought hey i'll watch this this looks fun got involved in one of the free rolls from the stream and was like hey this definitely seems like it could be a fun hobby so i started asking around i found like spraggy stream finton stream because they at the time were obviously dual streaming on the poker stars channel as well and thought i'll give playing a bit of a shot so i downloaded poker stars and played just like a little bit here and there never really thought much of it until i remember poker stars announced the pspc in the bahamas in 2019 so that was my first sort of year of playing poker was 2019 so or 2018 sorry so when it went to it was going to be january 2019 for the bahamas pspc and run it once or run it up run it up i think it was announced a platinum pass challenge so they were going to host a challenge for the next big poker streamer and whoever they like voted on and won it would win a platinum pass so I thought, I mean, if I'm going to play poker, I may as well stream it because I considered streaming games previously. I just never got around to it. So I thought, OK, right, I'll start. So I started at the same time as like TJ Reggie, Pieface and sort of Richie. Um, and we all kind of got involved with streaming together. And the more I streamed and the more I played, the more it made me realize it's something that I really enjoyed doing and definitely enjoyed more than like university at the time, because that was when I was in my second year of university like leaving first year going into second year um got affiliate real quick but that's just because of the nature of how twitch poker was back then it was just really really small community and everybody watched everyone basically mm -hmm. and just kept it going from there finished my degree decided to keep up streaming and here we are at the minute you know well uh, what, what did you graduate with again i i remember you missed yeah so stream. i did yeah i got a i got a 2-1 in international politics with conflict studies from queen's university okay. in belfast um i did law for a year and thought i mean when i was in school i always thought i was going to do law just because it's a good degree to have got into law and then in my first year i was doing well like i was on a first and i just thought this really sucks like it really sucks this is not the degree for me so I decided to change to international politics, and that's kind of also at the same time as when I found poker, and then decided to start streaming. And 
yeah, finished my degree and decided that instead of getting a real job, I may as well continue to try and keep streaming and do my best to try and, uh, I don't know, make some money, make it big. You never yeah. know. Yeah. Because it is fun. Like, it's 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 a, just a fun hobby. Same yeah. Time. Yeah, I know. I mean, I've had a lot of fun streaming so far. I, On a first, is not it's not a saying in America. So what is what does that mean? Oh, you're so, saying? Um, I don't know what, it's like your classification of your degree. So, like, yeah. how well you've done so we have you have a first so it's like first class honors okay and then you've got a two one which is like second class honors upper division two two a third and then like a pass and that's if you get any of those you've passed your degree and then obviously like first two one two two is like the classification you get in it okay i don't know what you guys do you guys just get your degree or like so classification yeah i mean we have our degree requirements and like our classifications i guess are like our gpa you know Right, just okay. like, like so just four yeah something. so it's out of like our gpa is like out of four and it's like you know mm-hmm. if you get straight a's you get a 4.0 if you get straight b's you get a 3.0 if you get straight c's you get like a 2.0 right okay or something like that yeah mm-hmm. i so mean like a first for us would be your equivalent of like a 4.0 yeah or whatever yeah and then it would like a 2.1 would probably be like a 3.5 and a 2.2 would be like a three and then it would drop down to like when until you just don't pass basically yeah <laughs> have yeah. to reset everything yeah the big saying in america is that um c's get degrees because like that's the bare minimum of work minimum. you can do yeah because <laughs> but like, in still school get degree. we had that like a b c so it was like we had a star a and then just b c d and okay. i think c was the minimum to pass mm-hmm. for like our leaving school exams to get in university and then we also have gcse's over here which are like when you're i guess like high school for you guys i don't i don't can't really remember the ages but it's when you're like 16 yeah. and you do like 12 or 13 different subjects to like decide if you can either like stay in your secondary school or like move to your grammar school or whatever okay yeah it's about the same age i mean i started high school at like 14 or whatever and that's yeah just like and then do you have like end of exams after that like um, mid exams like halfway through because yeah, after high school do you go to college or university yeah so i yeah i just finished high school like Mm -hmm. um two years ago so not really just finished i guess i've been out for a while but yeah so what what happens is like you start high school at 14 and you just go through and when you graduate then some people go to college some people you know will go to like trade schools to become like engineers plumbers and and then uh, you know some people i have a friend of mine who's in the military right now going in there Mm -hmm. straight out of college like a lot of people end up going to college but you know there's yeah, plenty of different paths, you know? Yeah, it's the same here. It's mm-hmm. like you go to secondary school and you don't have to stay in school after 16. Like, you, you in school till you're 16, do your GCSEs. That decides if you get into, like, a secondary school or a grammar school to then do more exams to get into university. Yeah. But you can leave and get a job or go to tech and do, like, a trade or something. Yeah, 18 is about that age over here is is when we'll start going on but yeah i guess it's just all arbitrary so i know well yeah when you started um when you started playing poker during while you were in school Mm -hmm. how how did you end up balancing your school life and playing Um, poker when you really got (laughs) deep in the streets or did you at all so i I mean i i'm probably not the best like role model for people who are in uni and doing stuff because i'm sort of quite lucky in that um, I've always done like essay writing subjects so like when I was in school like my A-levels were all essay writing subjects so my degrees were essay writing subjects like I can just absorb information throw it back out in a page put some analysis around it and then that's like that's me done so if I ever had um, like a paper to put in I would start it at like midnight the night before and then just work until like 12 hours straight until midday submit it stream <laughs> so I would just stream like five days a week <laughs> <laughs> and because because of my type of degree, I only had like six to nine hours contact a week anyway in uni. So I just spent five days a week plus streaming and just doing uni when it came up. It was like, oh, I've got class for an hour. Okay, I'll just stream later then. And just like worked around it and didn't really put in much work for uni. But thankfully, it was the right type of degree for me to not have to like really go too hard at like making sure i'm like studying all the time and writing essays all the time right right yeah i know (laughs) i know like right now like i was just like the last two months have been hectic because my Mm -hmm. two days a week i was going from 8 a.m to 8 p.m essentially 
Gross. And it, I never it was had anything like that. It was gross. It's it's been terrible. But my eight the count my my class that was at the end of the day was accounting, and I hated it right. so much. And I just changed my degree from like financial economics to regular economics. And accounting right. doesn't count for that. So I've just wasted so much time in that class essentially. Oh really? So I dropped it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's completely fair. So now I'm I got. Old, I <laughs> where's where's Sam? Sorry, you go on. I was just saying. So now you I've go just on, got yeah. all the time in the world. <laughs> that's good yeah you just yeah. stream and play poker as you can say one of my house mates did uh, uh like fighting on sneak economics and he now works in that kind of sector but there were certain classes that he just thought were like the biggest waste of time or like not worth it at all yeah and he would have had a lot of contact time whereas my type of degree because it's so like theoretical and opinionated over like actually learning something there was very little contact time and you're expected to like spend all your time doing individual research on papers and opinions and stuff and i was like yeah I'll, I'll, I'll do that don't worry and then just you know play poker yeah instead. yeah i've taken a handful of philosophy classes and i can imagine they're like kind of similar in that regard yeah, like you just I, have yeah, to do I a did. lot of research yeah i did yeah. a couple of philosophy modules as well actually when i was in my first and second year Who, yeah it's pretty good do you remember anybody you read did, like um yes yeah, so we did like modern political philosophy so it was all about like plato and socrates and all those guys and about their theories of like the soul and what you do as a person like the mm -hmm. high state of like intelligence is like achieving greatness it's like if you can read loads of books and be really smart then you're actually like the right. supreme human being and then you would like argue for and against those kind of points and then obviously like theoretical stuff like what is art what is like love between two human beings like trying to like work around what they've said what you've said and then put it in like a modern context mm-hmm those were always like definitely more fun classes than my like what's happened in south america over the last 30 years do you know what i mean like, oh, yeah okay. yeah i took like, <laughs> i took one politics class and i i'm done with politics like i was considering mm. stu like studying it and i was like i cannot do this i like i'm, yeah. I'm not studying philosophy though even though i kind of enjoy it mm -hmm. but like i'm taking extra classes you know i'm taking like i'm yeah. taking an, a class on existentialism right now I don't know if oh, you know any existentialists, yeah, yeah, but like, no, we did, we did some existentialism as well. Who'd you read? Do you remember? Fuck, it was four years ago now, so <laughs> yeah. no. But I, I remember the word. I could honestly probably even find old essays I wrote because it's all just saved in my Google Drive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it was. Um. Oh man, it was. It, it's a headache, man, because it's we're reading. Um, I don't know if you're if you've ever heard of Simone de Beauvoir. She's like a very, mm. she's a famous existentialist, no. uh, French, right. like around the time as Jean Paul Sartre. Okay. Um, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, she wrote, um, a lot of, a lot of really interesting stuff. And one of the things that she's writing about is like, um, is like on freedom. She says like human beings are freedom. And as I've been thinking Hello. about that, I'm like, are it, you know, are there restrictions to my freedom or whatever? Like, do I want to keep like <laughs> doing like all this school stuff? And like, I'll have like those days where I'm just like, I just want to play poker all day long. I know. <laughs> cause like, it's such a fun thing to do, but I, I would advise people to get their degree. Cause like, if anything, like what I'm doing shows how in some ways dumb it is of me, because obviously like I'm not making a lot of money, but on the flip of it, I could go into a graduate job and be making like, tenfold if you know what i mean what i'm making mm -hmm. now and it's just my choice and the good thing is it is a fallback like say after another 12 months or so or whenever the psbc is going to happen or even before then if things don't go my way like if i can't grow the stream the way i want to or if the, the poker doesn't go well i always have a degree to fall back on i always have like a job market that i can get into so mm -hmm. i feel like if anyone is studying and they still and they're like oh like i'm, I'm gonna be the next fucking like Linus Loning or whatever, the, the most amazing cast player in the world. And you're just like a kid genius. I think still, like, you just don't know what can happen. Yeah. And I would, like, yeah, finish finish my degree for sure. I, I, I totally agree with you on that one. Like, I've had, like, those days, I like, you know, everybody has those days where you're just like, man, why can't I just, you know, become like, Tom, do what Tom yeah. Dewan did where he just dropped out of school. But I was like, no, <laughs> yeah. Tom Dewan was also making six figures when he was in college. So I'm yeah. like, I'm not making six figures. No, so, yeah, it's, it's always good to have that degree. Yeah. Yeah. I think so that's why it was one of my sort of go-to things to do. It's mm -hmm. like, just get the degree. Like, you can do it. It's not that hard. <laughs> yeah. Like, just persevere. No. You'll get it done. You'll get it out of the way. It's not that hard, and it's always something that I just will have. Exactly. 
So mm -hmm. w when you were in school working on your degree, I, I was watching an old stream that was on YouTube of yours. It had um, OP Poker. It was, uh, yeah, what, it was one with the... him. Oh, was that, were we doing Spiringo? A Spiringo class? Yeah. And was I playing Spiringos? Mm -hmm. Oh, that was I a forget. long time it ago. Was an, it was an old form of Spiringo that I don't think's on uh, on Stars oh, anymore. Oh, Power Up. It was Power yeah. Up. That's what it was. Yeah. yeah. I used to play a lot of Power Up with Nick. Yeah, so you were talking about how you originally were starting the stream out, and then you ended up starting to do your uh, $50 uh, bankroll challenge. Yeah. Moving up the stakes, and you started playing just like you're originally doing sit and goes, and then it's now obviously evolved mm -hmm. into a whole lot more. So, what made you start? Uh, what made you think a bankroll challenge was like, you know, going to be a lot of fun? And then what made you start to evolve yeah. from just doing sit and goes? I think it sort of worked hand in hand. Like, I was starting streaming, I was starting playing poker, and everybody hears about how, like, this person started with X amount, that person deposited this amount, and I thought, I've played, like, no poker, I have so much to learn, I'm not, like, a rich guy, like, I'm working, and I'm at uni, and I'm trying to stream and play poker, 50, and I was like, $50 doesn't seem like a, a lot of an investment, and if it, if it goes broke, it goes broke, with the idea of the bankroll challenge is that you don't go broke, because you permanently move down in stakes, so that was, like, the real reason, obviously, the stream reason I gave was, like, hey, it'll be fun, like, we'll learn together, we can grow the bankroll together on stream, but for me, personally, I was just, like, it's a small investment don't need to worry about it it's 50 yeah. quid like i was still using my headset and like my headset mic or whatever like didn't have a mic my webcam was garbage and no lighting or anything like literally just pure pure going going for it and then as i was going for it uh, richie rob told me about the poker stars school discord as a good sort of forum to post hands and learn about what you could do and Obviously, sit and goes, especially the 45 months, like if they're really structured, you can really learn how to win them. Mm -hmm. And for me, is like someone who's competitive or something, and like I always wanted to have like rules. It's like, oh, well, if I'm in this position off this stack size in this sit and go, I know I'm going to fold these hands and play these hands. Like it was very easy to sort of learn, yeah, like rules of what I'm going to do, even though poker doesn't actually have many rules because you can really do whatever the fuck you want. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then once they started going well, and I started sort of interacting with other streams, especially like OP Poker back in the early day, I thought, hey, I can try some like power up because that's what sort of started them off. Because like OP stands for overpowered because they were playing power up streams okay. um, on stars. Like before they were partnered, they were still an affiliate channel as well. So I started playing that, and that kind of led me into growing my bankroll even a bit more. So it went from 50 to 100 to playing sit and goes pretty quickly. And then I thought, well, considering i was doing like i was doing extraordinarily long streams when i first started just because my sleep schedule was so bad because of university so i was doing like nine hour streams and then i was like you know what i should just play tournaments it's like that feeds into this kind of time scale that i'm doing um so that was maybe at about 120 dollars bankroll and then within three or four months i got like my first two big tournament wins and like the big 55 cent for a couple of hundred and then like the micro triple threat i think and then, like, mm -hmm. a month later, I followed that up with the Micro Millions win. Right. It's so, like, MTTs really sort of blew up quickly. And I just thought, well, fuck playing sit and goes for $3 <laughs> when <laughs> I can play, like, a 55, big 55 cent and win it for, like, whatever, $400, $400. Yeah. And that just sort of got me hooked. It was just like, well, I'm obviously not bad, but I, I was by no means good, but I wasn't bad. And that was literally enough for me to go, fuck it. I plan on trying to do this after university. Like, already back then, I was just like, it's so enjoyable. Why not go for it? So, mm -hmm. that's yeah. what I sort of decided to, to do and progress from. Yeah, so, you're, I guess it's different from a lot of people, because I know uh, a lot of people that end up getting into tournaments, they'll start with, like, a cash game background, but you just kind of, like, yeah. went all in on MTTs. Yeah, just because, I mean, to be fair, like, when I first downloaded PokerStars, and, like, the first $10 deposit or whatever... I obviously had no idea what I was doing. I didn't know what cash was. I didn't know what tournaments were or spinning goes. I, I had not played poker before. Mm -hmm. And I remember sitting down at like a, a five NL table and having like $80 or something. Like ridiculous, like sun running because I had no idea what I was doing. I'm just like flopping two pairs and like over bed shoving and people calling off like insane. I remember going, oh, I should like cash this out. 
And then I was like, oh, well, I'll just play like 10 more hands and then just like bust <laughs> all of it in like 10 hands. And was like, well, okay. And literally from like that moment on, I was, I'm never playing cash again. And I do <laughs> dabble in cash, obviously now. Yeah. Mainly PLO. Like no limit cash to me is just so, it's too tedious. Like there's so many dynamics in an MTT that change how you're going to play. Yeah. Whereas with cash games, generally, it's just like I play 100 big blinds effective to the nearest player, six max, and hope that they're not the player who's exclusively playing aces. Because if I would play cash, I would be playing low and micro stakes, and that's yeah. just heartbreaking. Whereas, like, it could be fun, you know, once in a while to fire up like a 50 NL table or something, but it just, it's too much of like a risk, like financially, to like, yeah. risk doing that when I know that the time and effort I'm putting in is on tournaments. Yeah, I know what you're saying. I mean, I I started out, I started out like in cash, just because that's what my buddies played, and you know, mm -hmm. grinded up a bankroll, lost it all. <laughs> like, yeah. it, so so, and then I, that that was like, I lost all that bankroll, and then I was like, well, I'm done with poker, I guess. I'm never playing again. And then, obviously, yeah. that didn't happen. I, when we went into quarantine, that's when I really found Twitch, and I started watching people play tournaments. Then I was like, hey, there's another form oh. of poker. <laughs> So yeah. I started it, it, grinding MTTs and sit and goes. I, no, I started grinding sit and goes during my uh, during my Zoom classes. <laughs> yeah, in quarantine. I mean, that's the perfect time. <laughs> I used to go. I used to go into obviously like two years ago, when I was sitting in the back of the lecture hall or whatever, with my laptop taking notes. I'd be sitting beside my friends, but I'd be on Poker Stars playing like spins and sit and yeah. goes, and they'd be like so <laughs> fascinated because no one in Northern Ireland really plays poker at all. So they're like, oh, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm playing poker. For money, yeah, for money. Just playing like fifty cent, one dollar, three dollar spins, whatever, and just like winning and just being like, Yeah, look at me look at me friends. I'm I'm loaded, I'm rich. Rich with my like eighty dollar bankroll on stars. Yeah, but making it, it's, such a, it's such an easy way to pass the time. Yeah, for sure. I mean I it I, I don't play in class anymore. I kind of like I fell out of that because for for a lot of reasons. But I talked about you it. Realize that yeah. it's smart to, to actually do your uni work. It's smart to pay attention sometimes. And when I was talking to Ape yeah. Styles on my first ever uh, first ever podcast, uh, we we talked about it. My dad was in Chad, and he goes, oh, "No poker in class." <laughs> you know, he's <laughs> like, like oh, "Yeah, gotta make sure you're actually studying." Yeah, <laughs> he's like, your, very your upset. Your education isn't. It's not cheap, is it? No, it's really expensive. It's it's not cheap at all. And my dad, you know, helps out paying for that. Yeah. So he. Yeah, definitely does crazy. not want to hear that we got a uh, suited Especially sevens because i just yeah, want to say I'm hi to suited sevens and pie what's up guys go ahead because i uh like my tuition was so for my tuition fees per year is about three thousand pounds so like uh three thousand five hundred dollars probably yeah and then like my like i can get a loan for renting so that i like my rent would be covered for the year as well that would be somewhere similar to like three thousand so like my total yearly tuition fees were close like somewhere between six and nine k <laughs> whereas you guys pay like infinite money unless you've got like scholarships and stuff isn't that right yeah i mean yeah unless we have scholarships yeah i mean i think you said you're playing what that's so it's like six seven k for like your to yeah, almost all of your year. total fees and that's mm -hmm. like that's our room and board for a year that doesn't include tuition <laughs> that's nuts and our room yeah, and board so it consists of this tiny ass room and some very mediocre food <laughs> i mean to be fair like i got lucky like lived in belfast my friends um like the guy who owns this house is one of my old housemates mm -hmm. and the houses would be very similar and you would just rent a house like there is student accommodation like on campus but it's so extortionately expensive Whereas if you just go be a landlord and rent like a student house for four people, yeah, like anywhere from like two hundred to like three hundred a month. Yeah, the problem for, like your everything. The problem is like the cost of living just like in the town around where mm -hmm. my uh, where my college is. It's you, you just might as well stay on campus because it the, yeah. there's like no there's no like you know student housing or whatever it's all just like pretty mm -hmm. nice houses or whatever that a lot of like nice yeah like mid suburb and yeah obviously pie says the beard's thick i need it i'm getting it i'm gonna get it cut i'm getting it shaved my hair needs cut my beard needs cut i just look oh, no. messy but it's whenever barbers open back up in like two weeks 
Yeah, I <laughs> oh, I, I had I had a little bit of a of a beard growing for a while, but I've I've since Low shaved it. It was nowhere near as glorious as yours. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's getting it's like dangerously like bad looking. <laughs> like I, it really needs to cut. Richie like, says, I, "Grow I, it down I'm to your belly." All, I'm literally gonna take like all of like the thickness out of it and just have it like coverage but not like fucking insanely massive did you ever hear of that show uh duck dynasty that was on in america uh i don't know i like i've heard the name but i all don't right. think i'm just saying like you gotta look at those guys beards i'll pull it up for uh chat oh, too i can see <laughs> yeah like proper biker beards yeah these guys are like you know pure like full-on redneck americans with huge mm. beards yeah like the guy there's a guy in a photo on the far right that i can see and he's got some impressive beard growth yeah it looks I bad. mainly out of laziness yeah that's the same photo that you've got <laughs> the guy in the far right yeah that guy like, I, I i you know it would take a while it would take a while but it's it's doable why has he got like braveheart face paint on i like, have no like idea He's like a Scottish American. They're they're not Scottish. I can tell you that they are. Yeah, because yeah, he's wearing kilts. They they look wow. at that. This this show was something else. I mean, if they're making if they're making the big bucks, if they want to hire a Northern Irish, uh, beard, I'm down. I will grow a beard for hundreds of thousands. Easy, easy money, <laughs> printing. Like, yeah. I have no problem doing that. I mean, it was like their whole shtick. Like they just have like long beards, and I don't, I don't know why people like that show. It was literally just a bunch of rednecks in Louisiana who made like duck calls for hunting, and then they'd go out oh. hunting. Like it's the, I mean, it was the wa- it was the stupidest appeal. show. Oh yeah, I mean, I, dude, I watched, I watched like the first like three seasons of it, and then like, <laughs> and then you know, I found out that that like entire family was like insanely homophobic, and I was like, all right, I'm out. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, ah, maybe not the best show to support financially. <laughs> it's like, okay, yeah. let's not do this. Suited Sevens, you should watch it all the time. It's like, it was like, you know, it's like one of those, like, reality shows where it's like, you, it's so bad that it's good, essentially. Yeah, like Kardashians yeah, or like, whatever. Yeah, like Kardashians or, like, uh, wh- whatever else, man. Mm-hmm. It's Teen uh, Mom. <laughs> Teen Mom. Oh, man. Ma- MTV. All the old MTV shows. Oh, man, I'm bangings. taking me back. All the, um... My friends and I, I remember we used to watch some show on MTV called, um, oh, what was it called? Oh, it was so funny. It was funny, it was like, like to laugh game. at. Yeah, uh, no, it was, uh, it was slightly different. It was called Friend Zoned, and it was, like, Ooh, all these I don't, people. I don't know if I know that one. It was so funny. They'd just go out, and, like, these guys would be, like, or girls would be, like, hey, I'm really into this person, and they're my friend, and then they'd try to go out and, like, ask oh. them out. Or I whatever, see. and they'd film the yeah. entire thing, and either the it's person like would get fish, but different. <laughs> it's like catfish, but they're friends. And yeah, this guy's like, friends. I got feelings for this person. I'm gonna go ahead and like, you know, try to ask them out. And it's like, let's bring a whole camera Dude, crew for, yeah, when we do it. Show. Ooh, that's, that's that's tough. And that's it's tough. so funny to just watch the people get like destroyed on TV, because <laughs> it happens yeah, so much more often than not. Mm-hmm. I guess that's what makes the good content for them. You know. Oh yeah, it's like, like people who go on like Jeremy Kyle, or I think it's like Jerry Springer, or for you guys or whatever. It's like you just yeah. go because they get paid to go on it. Like they're paid to create drama. Yeah, so it... much mistake, but people watch it because they're just like, oh, I love gossip, I love drama. Look at how much better my life is than all these other people. <laughs> it's like all right. It's you like um, away. it's it's almost like um, you you like watching the destruction, you know? Like mm. <laughs> you're just like oh, we we like seeing them lose. <laughs> yeah, it's like why not? It's kind of typical it, NA humor. That's what I say. That's what I say. <laughs> oh man, that that that's taken me back. I I haven't thought about any of those like MTV shows in yeah, so I many years. That used to be like the go home from secondary school, put the kettle on, have some tea, stick on MTV, and just watch brainlessly for hours instead of doing homework. Yeah, uh, that was my it, that was my go-to. Putting off homework, it's the story of my life, even even no, to this just, day. I'm just never doing it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I was uh, in uni, I was definitely not a, a role model. Just all-nighters every time I had coursework. Like, I once stayed up for four nights straight doing four different deadlines. <sighs> that like, sounds it, awful. It's just, it was, 
see at the time it's brutal but the you know the saying goes diamonds are made under pressure and some of my best essays were written extraordinarily seep deprived and like yeah. 19, 19 coffees deep because you're just in this like flow state you're just like well i'm just going for it i assume maybe that's what some of the, like the vegas cash grinders are like those guys who sit at cash tables for like 22 hours or whatever yeah like, to me that's insane like i don't i can barely sit on a cash table on stars for more than five minutes before i'm like oh get me out <laughs> <laughs> i mean i i've started i've started to grow a liking to cash that's really what i'm playing mostly these days mm. like i haven't but I mean, like, it is handy with like a student schedule you know like uh it, in yeah. someone who's not like trying to pull all-nighters all the time it's kind of yeah. good to just like sit down and play cash for a while instead of being stuck like yeah, with, like, like mtt schedules yeah yeah even though like on when was it i think i think it was thursday night I, when i was messaging mm -hmm. you about everything I ended up yeah. playing from like 8 p.m. to 2 a.m. just grinding yeah. 25 and L because I was like doing great. I ended up that was a good session. I won a hundred dollar pot at 25 and L, Ooh. which was pretty sick. I, Spicy, yeah. Yeah, it's like uh, bottom set versus Ace King. It was like Ace Jack seven, two tone. Guy had Ace King of Spades. Yeah. yeah, and we just ended up running it for 200 big lines effective. <laughs> That's clean. That was so clean. Like that's what there is like an appeal to like winning big cash pots or being like five hundred big blinds up at the end of your session. Mm -hmm. But to me, it's like I can play cash like so solid for like two hours, three hours, and then I'll just start to be like, oh, I know I'm not supposed to open this hand, but it's a nice hand to open. They three bit. Yeah. Maybe I should. Maybe I should just call bluff off half your stack. And you're like, it's like why did I do that? Like I would never have taken that line in an MTT. Because with cash, it's just so it's so there. You're like, oh, I can I can win this pot every time. Like you feel yeah. like you need to win every pot playing cash. Yeah, or I mean, at least I, I do. Because yeah. I'm, I'm like an undisciplined cash player. No, I know the feeling because like I was talking with um my friend uh uh Deaton Hustler uh, about it. He um I, I'll just use that name. I don't know if he wants me to dox his real name on stream, but um <laughs> he's a he's a good guy. He's helped he's helped me out like as I've um been trying to you know move up in poker and he's he's saying like it's you know you ha when you're starting out and like learning the ropes you really want to focus on one discipline at a time and like you know i've i i do have a decent background in mtts like i know yeah. generally what i'm supposed to be doing but like now that i'm playing yes, cash you understand the concept yeah i understand like you know i've got basic understanding of icm although like i couldn't tell yeah. you like if x stack is in the cutoff then i shouldn't be opening yeah. like these hands or whatever like mm -hmm. i just know like all right i have a medium stack i shouldn't be battling the big stacks or whatever <laughs> yeah but um he's he's basically saying like you need to have like the discipline to like focus on um harnessing um <coughs> excuse me harnessing your craft like with cash yeah. and like just being disciplined in that regard and all focus and all that stuff and it's like i'm playing tournaments from time to time i think i'm gonna try to uh you know donk around in some tomorrow yeah just but yeah it makes sense though you can like get into a different state when you're like in a field that you're not as familiar with you just kind of like start blasting off or mm. something like that just a kind of uh, yeah. different just form there is like no discipline for me like i've never had any coaching with cash so it's like you're just playing on in intuition like alone and like yeah. your idea of taking a hundred big blind mgt play into a cash game and obviously it's not a good thing to do but it's no. like what my brain is like wired to do having played mtts for so long yeah yeah i mean I, I definitely would get into cash games for sure yeah I mean, it, well of course like the ranges are totally different because rake no rake versus no rake and annies versus no antis like that's mm -hmm. it it just makes things calling ranges and all that stuff totally different in three bed ranges too i guess yeah but um uh, i don't know the main thing for me like i don't like I don't punt, like, in cash anymore. Like, I've kind of gotten to that point where I'm just like, ah, uh, okay, I guess I have to check back and lose just sometimes. Like, yeah, like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to, like, lose the pot. Yeah, like, I don't need to bet this board. I can just check fold with the king on this board to the big blind or whatever. Like, mm -hmm. it happens. Yeah, yeah, but, like, I know I'm, I've definitely been in that state. People their hands, especially, like, this, the, the cash sticks I would play, people would massively, like, overrate what they're doing mm -hmm. and, like, overvalue, like, shit garbage hands. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm still guilty of that. Like, I still overvalue mm. hands so many times. Like, I've I've made, in this last week, like, I've made some of the puntiest calls, I think, like, ever. I think calling punties, punt, I think punty calling is better than, like, going for too much value or something. Do you know what I mean? Like, 
like over extending your value Instead range of, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah like just like over volleying top pair like trying to get max with top pair or something do you know what i mean and yeah something that i definitely used to struggle with a lot but the problem is it's like it's something that's really good to do at the micro stakes because people are going to call with anything but it's really bad to do at like the mid and high stakes because you're going to just follow you and yourself into someone's yeah. better hand yeah i mean i guess i i guess i slightly disagree with you there because just like i i think like if you even if you like overvalue like top pair or stuff you can still get called over sometimes like you said especially at the low stakes yeah. but like you know if you're calling like way too wide then you know that call like, well, well yeah of course i guess like I, math wise I, I, I it's mean, essentially like, can, like minus cv fire like the, the odd hero call in but trying to do like a, a full-on like calling down every board because you have a pair that's obviously yeah that's garbage like that's what that's a lot worse <laughs> but i meant to sort of like in like a, a general sense of of uh yeah yeah putting it down yeah for sure for sure i i've mm -hmm. just i i know like i think my like I don't know. I guess I do make some. I mean, I make some outrageous plays playing like twenty five and up. Everyone does. I, I, yeah. I just, but like, I, I really the one thing I have to work on is like just stop calling so wide. Like I'll, I'll just like, like I just or just like calling or, people though. No, like on the river. Like I'll just like make like yeah. calls when I'm just like I really definitely like especially versus like certain players. Like I have to overfold, mm -hmm. but I'm just like ah. You know, I go back to like a fish mentality. I don't believe you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like, oh, his line makes no sense, but it's like it's not always gonna make sense. Like they are just gonna do wild shit, and they will have it. Like yeah, but I, it is something you can just sort of move on with, you know. I, I mean, I don't like going over hand histories as much, but I had like the, I, I made the plentiest call with Ace High, like a few weeks ago. It was like under the gun limped, and then like an, uh, like the button call. This was in like a nine max app game at like forty and L. So mm -hmm. under the gun limped, and button also over limped, and then I'm in the big blind with ace queen, and then I ended up raising it up, uh, and under the gun, I believe under the gun called, or maybe, maybe they raised pre, I don't know, maybe they like back raised. Yeah. I'm not like a hundred percent. No, I think they just called, and then like flop, I bet, um, they called turn I, I don't even remember the hand the like the board but it was like a really just bad board garbage I think. board it was you. just like yeah, a garbage like... board for me it was like low 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 two spades and i had the queen of spades and mm -hmm. it was ace queen off and i bet call turn went like turn was like 10x check check river was like blank of spades and like he just throws out like an insane like insanely weird bet and i was like ah i, I don't know if i believe <laughs> I really you want to see what you're doing even yeah. though i have like the queen of spades and i just should like uh, i don't know yeah it's like even though you've called me once and check back and then you're like betting in position on the river like, there's the spots yeah real hard to like go i mean i ended up winning he had like 10 high or whatever and yeah but I, I, then i sent to my friend and he was like what the hell are you doing <laughs> yeah, it's like that was the most garbage thing I've ever seen in my life. And you're like, well, sometimes the ends justify the means. I'm just gonna sometimes. Work, work, work with the punt and just hope that it, it always stays good. Uh, <laughs> Bithate yeah. says, Preds a God punter, even in empty tees. That's, uh, that's your name in the um, in, in your Discord, that's Chief true. Punter. Yeah, Chief Punter. I, I, I love it. There's nothing better than like early on in a tournament just deciding that, you know what? I'm just gonna triple barrel for my entire tournament life. I'm just gonna burn $11 and not look back. Because when you pull it off, you're like, sick. But there's no need, like the risk is just so high. Like there's literally no need, but I mean, I, I, I have to do it anyway. Yeah. I just have to. I mean, speaking of, um, you know, different times where you're blasting off in tournaments, I guess you, you've uh, you've had some good uh, saddy success lately. You got into the Sunday Million, yeah. like, twice i believe in the last like month yeah, or two 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 yeah two two weeks in a row and then i tried to satellite again last week off stream but mm -hmm. it was it was not not good yeah i only fired like two satellites anyway but yeah so um, satellites are definitely something i've always done mm -hmm. you 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 um you've talked a bit on stream you've what do you study or, or how did you study for satellites to get like for to satellites? understand them uh, study that book yeah, right i always keep the, <laughs> the book beside me it's a. Uh, Poker Satellite Strategy by Dara O'Kearney and Barry Carter. It's uh, 
real good like mm -hmm. a real good book it goes through like chapter by chapter what you should do in the early game late game middle game uh, versus tied opponents weak opponents it gives you ranges it tells you how to play mega satellites so i actually got that book in preparation for the uk spc the uk student poker championships two years ago okay because i was going over there to play with richie pi tj and a bunch of uh a bunch of other like community members who now stream um mm -hmm. and read the book on the way none of it went in because it, it, it is tough especially as someone who was like really new to poker but then the more you went over it the more i went over it the better it got so as i started to go over it more and then i realized when i went back i started playing satellites online especially like micro and low stakes satellites so satellites that you're buying in for like under ten dollars are just so crazy soft as long as you can like run on ev like not even run well people are going to make so many mistakes that it's going to be so easy for you to like guarantee yourself tickets which is why like i satellited the daily marathon the sunday million twice like i've already got three scoop tickets from satellites as well um especially as like an mtt player i think it is just a really good way of like lowering your variance but the flip side is that some people get stuck on satellites and they will play and play and play and they will have paid more on satellites for the tournament than the tournament buy-in itself like i have a rule where i never go above like 10 percent of the buy-in unless it's like a massive tournament so obviously 10 percent of like the 215 anniversary milli would have been 21 dollars but i spent like forty dollars fifty dollars on satellites to get in that was because the prize pool had what like over a million for first and second but if it's like the big 11 and you bust two like three dollar satellites it's not yeah. worth like playing anymore because you're just burning money you know yeah i, I definitely do not have as much of a satellite understanding <laughs> as you do like i'll yeah. just kind of be like oh there's a big tournament i'm gonna try to get into it like try to on a satellite. But yeah, dunk I, around. I would definitely recommend that book for sure yeah and like even in my discord section there's a uh strat chat section so if anyone like if you ever have a satellite hand or anyone does i'm very happy like i went over one today for vic who put it in my discord just because it's one of those things that i'm like i'm confident i can give good advice on whereas mm -hmm. if someone sent me a hand from like a 55 dollar mtt i could be like this is what i think is right but i have no way of proving it whereas at least i have like proof from the satellite book and like from my satellite results as well like yeah. my biggest online score is from a satellite as well hmm. like i satellited into the scoop 109 scoop main event in 2019 for two dollars and cast it for 1300 and something all off just one like two two dollar satellite just because they are so free <laughs> like if you can game select the right ones you just like really help yourself build a bankroll yeah because min caching a 109 never mind 10xing the buy-in or whatever it's just like insane yeah for so sure for the bankroll challenge for sure i um yeah i i need a i, I want to get better at satellites especially because um uh i i don't know if you pay attention to like acr or like any of those things and i'm not affiliated with the them sites, yeah yeah I, i'm not i mean i'm not affiliated with, i don't want to like sponsor whatever they're doing but they're like they're um they're doing this thing where they're doing it's called on um, like the next moneymaker or whatever because they just hired chris moneymaker as one of their pros oh yeah yeah because he left stars yeah and i don't know if you saw any of that but they're like doing um one cent like satellites essentially running mm -hmm like for the next two months or whatever they're having like a one cent game every day and it's a you know set like mtt kind of uh kind of thing and depending upon how you do in all those satellites like every week you um get on this leaderboard or whatever and if top 30 yeah. every week make it into this tournament that'll end up going for like um 105k for first and a sponsorship like deal with acr yeah that's cool like it's definitely something that is a good idea obviously i don't advise the people playing on acr if you do play on it never keep a lot of money on it yeah. because it's unregulated obviously it's not really in their interests to scum you but it's not impossible well yeah but, it... yeah the satellites like that like one cent saddies like free roll satellites and stuff it's a lot harder to apply strategy mainly because people are just fucking nuts like people are gonna go absolutely crazy 
to try and just build up like as big a stack as possible. Mm -hmm. But everything yeah. that's that's like a very good improvement. Yeah, I mean, like it's I, I don't know I haven't I'm not good at satellite math, but it does seem like I don't and I don't know what the other payouts would be for the tournament as well. Yeah, which is also like probably important to figuring out if it's like high value. But like you know when you look I, at I it on say, paper, yeah, like a one cent sati with like a 100k up top prize yeah. for the like buy-in tournament, like that's always going to be value, like no yeah. matter what. Yeah, it's like it's like one cent, but like over the span of two months they're doing these like tournaments mm -hmm. and i think like i think I, I think they're having like 100 of them so like at the end of the day it's one dollar total because they're all freeze outs mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. you know eventually it's like it's worth it's worth firing it's fun. worth firing and it's like you know it's definitely like not gonna like be easy but you know i might as well just give it a shot because yeah <laughs> you know why, why not why yeah. not luck box it what, and try to bank 105k that can happen yeah. yeah like there's there's nothing bad that can happen out of playing one cent satellites you know right you're not gonna like bust your bankroll no not in the slightest i mean yeah i'm just gonna give it a shot i might try to read that book too so that's kind of why i wanted yeah. to ask i guess uh, it's for like personal I, reasons I, I, yeah i would i would say it's worth getting yeah that's what the cover looks like poker satellite strategy yeah i remember that guy also came with a so, with a pko book like last year yeah so i actually haven't read the pko book i was gonna get it but i heard some things like from certain coaches or streamers that they thought a lot of the math in it wasn't good okay whereas no one has really disputed this book especially because like for many years Dara kearney was the single best satellite player in the world so like that in a way speaks up for itself mm-hmm um, but a lot of people didn't like his PKO book. I mean, I would like to read it for myself, but then I wouldn't know enough to, like, challenge the math, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So if I do get that one, it will be with more of a grain of salt. And I smell, like, something fucking burning outside. Thankfully, it's not this house that's on fire, so I don't really know what's going on. It's just your neighbors. But someone's, they keep someone's, on burning. Oh, yeah, someone's got, like, a barbecue or, like, a bonfire or something silly. <laughs> Maybe it's the I same guys that were smoking some weed earlier. <laughs> yeah, it could be. Honestly, it could be. You just never know. Different but, kind yeah. of smoke. At least, the, at least the house isn't on fire. That's always a bonus. <laughs> yeah, we got um, uh, grind a grind a eh in chat. I don't know. Uh, eh, is that person a regular in your stream? Yeah, yeah. That's called yeah. grind. Okay. Yeah, grind. Yeah, as if I play, uh, or I'm guessing me if I play poker and or cash mm -hmm. or MTTs, both depends on how I'm feeling, I guess. Um. Yeah, we got uh, anybody in chat. If you all have a question for Pred, go ahead and drop it. Um, but right now, we—I I, I mean, obviously, we have um, Poker Starters Players Championship. You you won yeah. a a a, um, a platinum pass to that, which is a lot of fun. But you know, we don't know when that's yeah. going to be. But how'd you how'd you win that pass? I I think I remember so, vaguely, yeah. but I want to hear the so story again. At, uh, Lex Live Two. So Lex Live Two was. I'm assuming a lot of people, especially if you're in the poker community, know Lex Veldhuis. He is the number one Twitch poker streamer, um, straight up. He's been on a break. He's on paternity leave, and he's coming back. Actually, I think tomorrow. But he's been on paternity leave with his new kid. But he held a community meetup, one in Germany or something, or Belgium. And then I couldn't make that one, but then because of university. But then Lex Live 2, which was held in London. So I flew over shared a room with chris martin who is uh easy with aces former mod because he had to sort of like stop modding because he's got a real job now and uh and uh Stushi, who is <laughs> an interesting character but definitely in the <laughs> a lot of people will win the community and um we went over and throughout the week there was tournaments like there was a main event with i think it was x amount up top or guaranteed like a 215 main event Plus, like, 10 euro sit and goes and side events and stuff, or 10 point sit and goes and 50 quid side events. And I was just having fun drinking beer. But on the Saturday, so I arrived on the Saturday, and because it, it went from Friday through to the next Sunday, but I went Saturday to Sunday. Um, on the Saturday, uh, one of the Poker Stars guys had all these little bingo cards. And on the bingo card, there was, I think, 12. 12 little tick boxes and on the 12 tick boxes each one of them was a challenge and they were for the most part non-poker related challenges some of them were poker like gasha tournament or uh like win a sit and go or play three sit and goes but some of them were like take a photo of yourself outside the casino with friends like tag lex in a post on twitter like very basic things that you would get a stamp for mm -hmm. and on the back of the card it said like on the next saturday if you have 
got nine or something like stamps on the card come into the poker room on saturday at 11 a.m or whatever so on the saturday everyone has stamps which is pretty much everyone who got a card anyway walks up with our stamps and we're all in the room and everyone thought it was going to be like uh, a package to lex live 3 or merch or something but when we walk into the poker room in the morning there's like cameras and stuff set up and everyone was like hmm this is interesting also no one could see lex so lex comes out with a camera and a microphone and he was like hey everybody yada yada like it's everyone coming in by the way for those of you who uh like did the bigger cards you have a chance to win a platinum pass so everyone was like holy shit what's going on so anyone who had completed nine or more were put into all-in shootouts so there was three or four different tables where everyone was just randomly you just got to choose which seat you sit in you could just sit down at the first table second table third table whatever and there was a flip out so everyone was dealt one card face up and then another card face up and the best hand after a flop uh won and the top two people from each table so you have one flip out one would go through another flip out best hand would go through i was through as the first person on the second table so in total there were six of us that went to a final table and the final table did actually have some poker so i wasn't just infinitely lucky <laughs> and uh we had a spinning go style sort of spinning go max style tournament where the six of us would play for 15 minutes i think it was and the blinds would increase but after 15 minutes or x amount of hands mandatory all in for everybody so we were playing and for the 15 minutes nothing big really happened people were just like exchanging chips and then the last hand before all in mode and this was kind of like worked well because i had recently talked with james from op poker about how to optimally play spin and go maxes because i was interested in the game and he said that the idea is that you want to make sure if it's going to be a multi-way all-in in the spin max and obviously this is technically the biggest spin max because it was for a platinum pass yeah you need to make sure you have the most chips going into the all-in shootout so i was like second in chips or something and it folded to me and i was on the button or on the cutoff with queen jack off and obviously the the idea then is that if i shove now for my 12 big blinds no matter what getting it in queen jack off versus the net range of like even if the remaining three players call is better than getting it in eight ways or six ways with aces right. even if you have like less chips because your equity's dead so i shove and it actually folds to chris in the big blinds who made it chris martin who was sharing my room mm -hmm. and he had ace eight or something of course i just drill the queen on the flop run out safe so i now have two starting stacks everyone else is like up or down a little bit from one starting stack so no matter what this mandatory all in i'm guaranteed to see one more all in because whoever wins this all in is going to win like everyone else's stacks but only half of mine and i'll have at least a chance to like run it back up so we all get dealt one face card we all get dealt a second card face down and then they deal the flop and they dealt the turn and by the flop and the turn nobody had ace high nobody had king high I had queen high and nobody had a pair so like obviously everyone was like oh hopefully they had like a pocket pair in the hole or they have like an ace in the hole like hidden because there was an ace on it was an ace high flop and um then everybody showed their second card and i still was winning with queen high five ways and then the river came a brick and i won with like i think it was queen four offsuit uh, in a five way all in for a platinum pass so that was yeah. ridiculous that is obviously amazing and that's like half of where run like fred came from because before going to lex live people used run like fred because i pretty much had like the most garbage year like 2019 and 2020 my, my ev was so fucking garbage and then we go to lex live and i pull off like the most ridiculous like hold with queen high five yeah. ways that's ever been seen in poker for a platinum pass so that's why run like fred became like a, a good thing um and that's how i won my pass and then because we're all nice people before we actually sat down on the final table chris suggested that we all do a split so whoever wins the pass gives three percent yeah three percent each to the people who also made the final table so it's not like if you don't win the pass you get nothing yeah because the idea the thought process was imagine it went to like the all-in mode and you were heads up for a pass or something 
and you got like bad beat heads up for a platinum pass where second gets literally nothing we were like it would be a bit of a like consolation prize if everybody else in the ft gets three percent so i took yeah. through 85 percent of my pass gj has bought one percent and richie and i did so before the flip out even happened richie and i swapped i think five or something so richie has five of me but no, he's got a pass. I'm saying because we technically did a swap, I should have five of him. He says no. <laughs> Richie says, but he still claims he wants worse than anyone in poker. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes, Richie. But I no, mean... that For that one moment, nobody runs better than me. Yeah, that was... That sounds like maybe the sickest run of all time. It was nuts. Yeah, maybe. It was ridiculous. Because, <laughs> like, I had to win a flip out to get into the orange, to get into the sit and go, to then... Yeah win a 40 well to win like a, 50, a 45 55 versus chris to then win with queen high five ways like yeah i mean nobody like that's insane i th i think we can just like as well you wish 20 <laughs> percent. <laughs> i think it was 30 um yeah i remember yeah i remember we we swapped five percent you know before you know when you got oh, platinum sure, pass yeah. before i even met you hmm. yeah <laughs> yeah like it was just like a mental like at birth thing like this 2022 <laughs> barcelona platinum pass that i'm gonna win for five million and yeah. never stream again. I'm gonna run off into the mountains in Peru or something yeah. with my the, five million. Before the PSPC was even a thing, you know, before <laughs> before we knew that we, it would get postponed a year, we agreed yeah. to swap. <laughs> yeah, that's my my platinum pass story, and yeah. it never gets tired telling it because it's just such a lovely way to say that I am so much luckier in short doses than many people. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'm because it was it was insane luck. I'm really hoping that that story, you know, can become a extended one once the uh, true. Once, yeah, once I mean, the, if I uh, win the actual happens. tournament with Queen High, I think I'll have to get like Queen Four tattooed on me or something. <laughs> Maybe I'm pretty sure it was Queen Four off, but honestly, I can't even remember. All I know is Queen High. That's like I, the important bit. Yeah, I remember it was Queen High. It, at least I don't remember the hand, but I remember there's there's some article about it, like on mm. Poker Stars. Yeah, I've, so got, I've like, got one. Yeah, I've got one uh, linked on my on my uh, Twitch channel. Yeah, I'm sure they have, like, the actual hand in there. Yeah, I think so. There was, like, a, an embedded video, but because of, like, copyright shit from Twitch, it got, like, taken down. So I actually Man. don't think we have the video anymore, which is kind of sad, but yeah, it's that... probably archived somewhere. Copyright on Twitch has been annoying. Like, I'm trying to figure out the best ways around it. Like, luckily... It's been sad. I know. Like, I'm... You know, I'm, like, also, like, a musician. So I make, yeah. so I make music and all that stuff, and I do have, like, some artists that I know who like have let me use their music which is cool but i need to like mm. i think my plan right now is like i'm gonna try to make some music and like get it recorded and like actually mixed and then i'm gonna like use that on stream because yeah then they can't take it away from me it's mine <laughs> yeah you know? that's cool that's cool yeah cause, uh, i popped in here was it last weekend last saturday i think Did it was music? yeah last friday it was uh, uh last friday yes yeah because yeah, bluegrass music that i play uh what one of the traditional things in it they're called like fiddle tunes because they were like originally written on fiddles and right, so yeah. it's fiddle tune friday <laughs> ah I right yeah because yeah. i was like i mean it was real late for me it was like 2 a.m or something i think when i stopped playing yeah it was because you know falling with friends as they say yeah it was yeah it was like six ish my time six thirty or seven i don't know but yeah it was uh it, it's a lot of fun i love playing music and i'm really hoping like i can get to record some stuff soon yeah that'll be sick yeah like i love music too but yeah. i unfortunately can't sing as many people who watch my stream know and uh don't play an instrument but my dad's a drummer in a blues band and he yeah. challenges a blues player as well yeah I remember. so there is some type of music in my family <laughs> yeah i remember a few months ago when you were streaming from your dad's garage you know you had like yeah. the, the one the main conflict of like you know who's who's got the garage for streaming <laughs> yeah like like what, oh oh sorry guys like i can't stream today but then because dom's like playing a live stream or whatever <laughs> but he yeah makes, he makes a little more money than i do so i think it's it's only fair that he uh he gets the yeah and puts the, the roof over your, and put the roof over your head too yeah for sure well to be fair i didn't even know that. just like cycle down to the garage cycle all the way back home <laughs> someday some experience but that's yeah. what lockdown brought so that's what i was dealt with you know yeah, fifth aid said in chat, uh, Poker Stars Team Pro will win. I don't know if we know that that answer, but you are yeah, on Patty yeah, Power. I think it would be a long time. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's the newest, probably the newest thing for you, 
like in terms yeah, of like sure. Twitch stuff. So uh, you want to talk about that? What? Uh, how that? Yeah. How that's um, So honestly, I don't really know how. How? I'm actually gonna check. I might have a message. <laughs> Connor says show Bob's. <laughs> Ah, so yeah, I just got approached by my contact at Paddy Power. And okay. he was like, hey, um, as you can see, Chelsea in his name, it said Paddy Power. He was like, hey, so I work for Paddy Power. I can see you're streaming at the moment, but if, because I was obviously streaming at the time, like if you're interested, I'd be really cool if you could come to me for a chat. And he was like, um, to show this, like, isn't a scam, whatever, like, you can ask Finton, like, he's with Aces, knows who I am. Um, and so does, like, M Ben and stuff. And I thought, yeah, I mean, it's it won't hurt seeing what the offer is because I actually turned down an offer from Party Poker in December for like a short term contract that technically paid better over the short term but because it was a short term contract and because it was Party that closes all doors to pretty much every other big site unless you're like a top name so it yeah. wasn't worth the risk whereas obviously with Party they're owned by Flutter and it's a non contracted sort of partnership i guess you could say is probably the best way to put it where i play on the site we play our home game on the site i get some tickets every day and it's a very casual working relationship like there's no there's nothing stopping me from tomorrow being like hey like i'm 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 done with patty obviously that would be strange but there's yeah. nothing stopping me you know what i mean there's no contract there's no there's no nothing but it has helped me immensely with just a bit of like financial st like stability, especially because I'm not a big streamer. Like I don't make a lot of money off streaming. I can well, I don't even make enough to like cover rent and bills. But because of money I've got saved up, I just top a little bit in. Do you know what I mean? Every yeah. month, with the idea that within a year or so I should be flying, and every little helps. Like having this like affiliate ship or partnership or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. With Patty really does uh I need to close my window. It's like getting really smoky in here. <clears throat> so sorry. Hey, go I'm, like, ahead. Getting like a dry throat because of <laughs> someone who's like really poorly barbecuing or something outside because it's <laughs> surprisingly a sunny day here. Yeah. I I th I think it's sunny outside. I really haven't been outside yet. <laughs> yeah. Today. We get we get uh about six sunny days a year. So days like this people take a uh, full advantage of. Makes but, sense. But um yeah, so every like small little bit of working with anyone or like free stuff i can get with like no obligations it's really dumb of me to turn down like so uh, it's just a win-win situation for me basically yeah. in the stream and like obviously a lot of people might not necessarily like watching me play on party because they can't play on party themselves but it's definitely something that i can't miss on like it definitely doesn't damage the stream so yeah. why not do it like there is really no downside from what I can see or have seen in the last like two months. No, it doesn't seem like it. I mean, well, hey, I can't play on Poker Stars or or Patty, yeah, so like, and I true. still I still yeah. like watching the stream. So <laughs> yeah, no, that is it is lucky that Americans uh, have prayed to the moon, says Connor. Exactly, <laughs> and you're gonna be modding me all the way. <laughs> <laughs> but also, I mean, like that's the idea, that's the dream. Because if it doesn't work out, I still have my degree, and I can always fall back and get a real job. Yeah. Yeah. Red for the money. It's Richie not necessarily monies. for the money, but it's like, it money allows me to do it. If that makes sense. Like I obviously can't do this without revenue or capital <laughs> to actually afford to live. Mm -hmm. Yeah, imagine having to get a real job. Like it actually, it's just hurts my soul. I've been working since I was like thirteen. Yeah. I had a paper job at thirteen, working in bars since I was fourteen, um, until twenty one. So I was like. <laughs> I just really cannot be fucked to go back and do real jobs again. I, I just know. let me live, let me stream, let me play poker <laughs> all day. I know the feeling. All day Wait, and all night. Were you, were you, you were allowed to work in bars at 14? Well, allowed. So the way I look, <laughs> if you take away the beard, I pretty much looked like this since I was like 14. Okay. Minus like a little bit of height. Um, So I, I was lucky in the sense that I could... uh do like wine waitering at first or like not behind the bar but like still in the process of buying and selling alcohol and then working behind the bar as well yeah yeah i'm, I'm not gonna say where because obviously you know no definitely illegal but we don't need to um 
You don't need to um, dox them or whatever. Expose, expose, yeah, expose them. Expose people who, to be fair, a lot of them didn't know I was underage, so that's also on me. <laughs> <laughs> so. That's awesome. See, I used to, Quite I know the well. feeling. I know the feeling about um, not being bothered to work uh, again, you know, like, it, it, paying well is fine. Like, I, I used to, I worked at golf courses, like, while oh, I was growing up. I, I used to golf. play, oh yeah, I used yeah. to play, like, in high school, like, competitively. I ended mm, up yeah. giving, I, I ended up giving it up, because I didn't have much of a future in it, you know, yeah. but. I mean, I, I had, it's fun. I actually had the option to, if I continued playing, to go and play on America, and go to college there on a scholarship with golf. But really? it, at the time of my life, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, I had to choose between that and something else, which I also didn't end up doing. Hmm. So, uh, <laughs> I don't turn it down anyway. What, what was your, uh, what was your handicap? Do you remember? Uh, like... So I, I'm like an absolute bandit. So, uh, whenever I was playing, I played at, um, Hollywood golf club, which is where Rory McIlroy, yeah. um, played like his golf club. And for two years in a row, I made like the club, like a uh, match play, like final. And I was on like the the junior and the senior uh, like match teams for the club, but my handicap was twelve because whenever I played like weekly tournaments like Saturday competitions, I would play so garbage, and then I would go into match play and shoot like four under, so I'd be playing four under plus I'd have like my twelve shots on my opponent. Yeah. So I was just like the biggest fucking bandit. Um, <laughs> but I think I got down to nine before I stopped playing, and that was. Pfft, seven years ago i yeah. recently started getting back into it i actually got some new irons for christmas because really? i have been getting back into golf but because of um covid <laughs> i haven't been able to play the courses have been closed so that's sad but hopefully they open up soon yeah they I should know. be opening in like the next few weeks and i can get out and try my new irons and maybe get a membership and get back into it but for the most part I, i've just been playing for fun because like yeah. during the early part of lockdowns here the courses were still open so i was just taking my mom's car when i was living at home and just driving around Northern Ireland, playing courses for cheap, mm -hmm. just paying like ten quid, and just playing with random people, and just getting back into it slowly. Yeah, but I mean, surely, I miss it a lot of times. It's a lot of fun, but I haven't played. I really, I haven't swung a club, or I have, I have swung a club. Like I've gone out to like a driving range or whatever, but I haven't really played in a, such a long time. Mm. It's like, yeah. you know, it's sad in a sense because I it, I used to do it every day. Like yeah. I was either working at a golf course or I was playing, playing golf. golf like that was yeah. that was me in high school like I started working at a golf course when I was like 14 my first one and then I worked at another one yeah like I worked at two at the same time and the other one was like just like a one day a week thing just because I was it's working just, I mean, with a great friend of mine money as well isn't it yeah oh yeah I got you know I used to get tipped like when I got worked at the second course was like a really nice country club mm. <laughs> oh uh yeah sorry DJ Hustler in chat said I think I forgot to change the title. Yakers. That's all good. Hold on. Let's see if that goes through now. God, I'm a, um, yeah, it's through. I am a, I'm a Twitch noob. That's I'm fine. a, I'm a fish. I mean, every, on, on every learning experience, you know? Yeah. It's, uh, it's definitely been a learning curve, you know, I'm trying to figure out like how everything works mm -hmm. on Twitch. I, I don't know. I need to, I need to do more work on it, but yeah. Welcome. Welcome to chat. Uh, DJ hustler. My uh, essentially my coach, I guess. He's a he's a great guy. Nice. Yeah, he just uh, he just went to play some private cash game, made like what like fifteen k or, or more, in some like Clean. in a, in a week. He played. He said he played like almost like fifty hours or so. Uh, he can definitely correct me. Cash. In chat. Get out of here. Yeah, but get out of here. <laughs> if it was cash, if you had a chance to play with a bunch of rich whales in cash. I mean, very true. That is very, very I, true. I would sit down for hours, you know, just print yeah. money. But, unfortunately, no casinos in Northern Ireland, no live poker. That, All illegal. That's strange. So. Just, like, coming from, like, America, you know, where it's, like, online poker is what's illegal, but we still have all yeah. the casinos. And then, like, Northern Ireland's, Ireland's, like, the complete opposite. Yeah, I mean, <gasps> but we're, like, a real fucking, uh, like, backwards country. Like, we have really shit politicians in Northern Ireland, like, really fucking garbage. So, I'm not surprised. Yeah, because <laughs> you can play you can play across the water like in England, Scotland, Wales, like the other parts of the UK, and then down south in the Republic of Ireland, you can also play live poker, just not here. Huh. But, like we have like drinking laws where like on Sundays you can't buy alcohol past like certain times and stuff, just because yeah. the ruling parties are both like a mega Catholic. Yeah, I know. Christian. Sorry, Catholic's the wrong word, because <laughs> one half is Protestant, the other half's uh, Catholic. Catholic. Okay. 
Man, religion. It's crazy. I mean, like, there's a bunch of, of like, religious laws in... I, I live in Ohio right now, and I used to live in... Right, right. I, I still live in Kentucky, but, like, you know, I, I, I go mm-hmm. to school in Ohio. And in Kentucky, I mean, I, I don't... I know the laws are, like, you can't buy alcohol on Sundays, like, before 1 o'clock or something like that. Mm. And, which I'm like, sure, that makes sense. Like, it's fine. But the, the weirdest law ever in Kentucky is that... I, like it's not enforced anymore, obviously, but you couldn't have an ice cream cone in your back pocket on a Sunday. It's like who who would have who would have had that to think that that needed to have a law? But yeah, like even like it's with funny. drinking, like our cl- our clubs close, at, like we can't serve alcohol in, in like clubs and stuff like after like uh, half one and huh. like half one in the morning, like one a.m. So like our clubs end real early, so then people go back to house parties, which is obviously like a big. But was a bad worry with COVID because people are so used to having house parties in Northern Ireland that they were like, even with lockdown, people are just gonna have house parties, house parties. Richie said we have <laughs> stupid rules in the UK too. Got to be able to joke about them. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Richie said that the law is in do. place, the ice cream law, because there's enough pl- space for a second gun. We're we're getting <laughs> we're getting oh, we That's get true. all we get all the Kate Kona jokes. Uh, whenever I'm whenever I'm streaming uh one of these interviews, it's great. I mean, Pi was making fun of me last week because I um terribly terribly mispronounced norwich when i whenever oh, i was norwich, yeah, yeah yeah i was i was saying norwich and yeah like yeah, that's that's just like a, such a an americanism thing for yeah. you guys to say and then pi was like cackling laughing at me for mispronouncing it and i was like because oh. I mean, when, when i was like a <laughs> filthy northerner isn't he richie <laughs> yeah like because I used to watch Premier League, and I was trying to get into it. And I like mm-hmm. was like, all right, I'll just find a team that got promoted this year. And then whenever I was watching it, and it was Norwich that uh, that got promoted. And then they got relegated, I think, in that same year. Yeah. And I was Maybe like... I'm not much of a football fan. I watch football me neither. sometimes, but it's like just not my, not my go-to sport. <laughs> yeah, they're saying you can still... Kind of so you can still shoot someone with a bow and arrow illegally in the walls of York. <laughs> Yeah, I, I do know that one, to be fair. That's funny. I mispronounced Yosemite out to Yosemite, I'm assuming you said, Richie. You say, uh, yeah, so Premier? We would say Premier, but you say what, Premier? Uh, yeah, I said Premier League. I guess you'll say Premier. Yeah, Premier. Makes like more the sense. Pre- the Premier or something. Yeah, yeah just like that. You know, like you all spell favorite differently than we do. Yeah, yeah, true. I mean, the... you guys just have, like, dumbed down English for, you know, a hey. dumbed down nation. Isn't that right? I mean, when we start looking at Shakespeare, all of our English is dumbed down English, you know? Yeah, the way that true. they used to speak, yeah, like it's crazy just... crazy old, yeah. Eventually, like, Euro... Eventually, like, English English will start changing to become, like, as dumbed down as American English, and then American English will become, like, something probably. incoherent, probably, as time goes on. <laughs> it's like... I remember when I discovered what oregano was in the S. Oh, ori- do you mean oregano? Is that what you guys say? Yeah, we say, say oregano. Oh, oregano. <laughs> it's oregano. The Italians, do they say oregano? Surely not. They'd say oregano. They wouldn't say oregano. <laughs> I thought there was some wonder spice they kept offering me. Yeah, do you want some oregano? I know, like... Your, uh... I know, you say, like, basil instead of basil? Yeah, you, like, we say basil. Of eyes. Yeah, Bez, and oh. I have... I have a friend whose name is, like, Basil, but, like, you know, oh. it's spelled as Basil, so it's kind of like, you gotta yeah, take a second. Yeah, people call him Basil. Yeah, yeah cause that, that's, that's, because that's his actual name. Like, that's how his parents, that's what his parents call him. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. oregano, it's weird. People use it as slang for, as slang for weed, you know, over here. Oh, really? So you, yeah, because, you know, like, right, the green leaf. Would be like, yeah, people would like, but if you had, or, like, the joke would be, you bought oregano and not weed because you're like yeah yeah yeah. you don't know what weed is whatever because obviously everything here is is like drug dealers and stuff it's not it's not legal at all yeah i mean well there is like i think you can get medicinal here but like that's only from like your doctors prescribed if you have like terminal cancer or whatever yeah i mean it's real hard to get here it's changing over here like it's still Mm -hmm. very hard to get i mean most of your states right a lot of your states have uh like even recreational use right i think no not there's a lot of states that have recreational use. Like, it's definitely, like, I think somewhere around 15. Maybe mm-hmm. a little bit more. But I think almost every single one has medicinal use. 
So like yeah, but that makes sense. Like that yeah. is science. The big science has has worked its magic. Yeah, and so they so really can't here. argue it anymore. <laughs> no, I mean here. Uh, I mean, I think it's the UK as a whole, like, you are able to get medicinal, but it's real, like, real hard. Like, real, real, real hard. I don't know anyone who's ever done it, if you know what I mean. But I do yeah. think it is a thing. Like, some of the world's biggest cannabis-producing factories are in the UK, mm -hmm. yet it's not legal here. It's crazy. I know. Crazy I, talk. My roommate's trying to get uh, a medical card. <laughs> He's thinking about oh, yeah, it, I even mean, though he doesn't fair. really smoke. Like, he's just like, I want to Yeah, Richie one. says you're not going to get arrested. Yeah, like, they wouldn't arrest you, but they'd be like, you, like, they'd search you to make sure, you're, like, you're not dealing or whatever, and then they would confiscate it, and you might get, like, a warning. But, yeah, yeah they're not going to, like, bring you in for having a joint, basically. They're, I mean, they're not going to, they don't really do that here anymore. Like, it's, like, you know, decriminalizing, like, it's kind of, like, on, like, a low priority yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, and yeah, because like we want like a type C or whatever. Uh, Over here. yeah, I I really so we've got don't like type know. A, type A is like cocaine and stuff, and then like yeah. your B's are like your amphetamines, and then type C is like weed and stuff. Yeah, and well, I mean, drugs. Oh, amphetamines you can get anywhere in America. All you have to do is That's like true, just, yeah. you know, it's like it's bad, but like or yeah, I guess opiates, like, opiates is mm. like the the main thing that's like <laughs> Americans are really struggling with. But like, yeah. yeah, yeah, but like oh, uh, Oregon. You know, they they decriminalized all drugs. Yeah, it's like what uh, Portugal and Brazil did, I think. I think so. Just decriminalized everything. Yeah. It's so much better. If you have the right facilities in place, it's like so much better, I think. Yeah, I mean, you're Just like... because if you're promoting safe use, like, I think it's, it's Brazil or Portugal. And the, like, the rate of drug death and addictions, like, dropped so much whenever it was decriminalized. Because you have legal ways to get help. And like legal ways to test your drugs to make sure you're not taking something that's like really bad for you yeah you know it's the the closet libertarian in all of us <laughs> everybody just wants free drugs day and night <laughs> oregon you must mean or yeah it's the oregano state. so or oregon oregon you guys would say <laughs> yes yeah, it's, it's not oregon it's oregon <laughs> Yeah, so Man. when are you going to adopt us, Northern Ireland? You know, whenever, now that the UK's left, uh, left the EU and the Republic probably don't want us, we might become the 50-whatever state of the US. Like, if you, how many do you have at the minute? 53? We've got 50. Two? 50. Oh, you've got, you've got 50? Even right, well, 50. we can be number 51. Yeah, we I mean, be number 51. you know, it's crazy because, like, our, the capital of our country is Washington, D.C., and it's not a state. Yeah. Like it's yeah, like it's, it's total separate there is entity. Washington State, right? Yeah. Yeah, because Washington State, yeah. So it's like, you know, Washington D.C. is over here on the East Coast, and then like Washington mm. State is over there, like all the way on the yeah, other side of the country. Like, yeah, like mid northwestern state, right? I'm trying to like imagine my my U.S. geography, which isn't yeah. great, but I have been to the U.S. once. Twice. Yeah. I went to Boston, and I'm trying to remember if I went twice or once, like skiing, mm -hmm. um, in New Hampshire. Definitely once. <laughs> definitely, definitely once. once. I think twice. I think twice, though. But yeah, yeah, it was good. I mean, I say it was good. I don't know if I would live in the U.S. Um, I would definitely travel. Mm -hmm. But there's just a... Uh, I mean, I just hate... Like, obviously, as someone who studies politics and studied American politics in my final year of uni, did it in school, I've studied American politics probably, like, four or five years of my life. I could never live there because your political <laughs> system is just absolutely fucked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like it's... supposed to be like the freest state in the world you go to like fucking world's global freedom index and you're like 55th or something it's like not even close land of the free but, i mean land of the free even uh, yeah. though you're less free than most other places yeah i know i, I don't know if you ever heard of the show the newsroom it's like one of my favorites newsroom? of all time no. it's um jeff daniels is in it and it's like uh the first episode is like the some college student some girl goes up and asks like why do you think or why is america the best country in the world and jeff daniels just goes off about how it's not <laughs> yeah it's like it's not <laughs> he's like yeah. i mean he's... she says no country's perfect oh no for sure i yeah. mean northern ireland's an absolute shithole but would i rather live in norway than the u.s probably or like sweden yeah like if i had the if i had the revenue if i had the capital for sure yeah Dejan hustler in chat he's a norwegian man Oh, is he? Yeah. yeah. I mean, Norway's sick. I've, I've been to Norway. I've been to Oslo. It's crazy expensive, but really nice. Like, really, really nice. It'd be cool. It'd be a great place to visit. I mean, I 
you know, I haven't. I, I've I mean, been. It's tough if you're in the U.S. to visit really anywhere outside of the U.S. just because you're so far away. Yeah, I yeah. So I visited um, I visited uh the, I visited Europe like uh two summers ago. Yeah. I we went to, the U.K. We went. We were mainly just in London, and then we went mm-hmm. to France, it, just Paris really, uh, and then we visited yeah, my like, re- capitals and stuff. Yeah, we did like all like you know everything that people would regularly go to. I, I, I it's unpopular. But I I don't like Paris. I like I I'm yeah, not I'm I mean, not the I've biggest fan of the city. Loads of times, and I've also actually never well I I've been on the outskirts of Paris, but I've actually never spent any time there. Yeah. Like I was there at the Arc de Triomphe or whatever. Yeah, I, it's a, I mean that's like the architecture is cool and stuff. You know, it, yeah. the only cool part there, like my favorite part at least, was uh, Napoleon Napoleon's tomb. Uh, it's yeah. it's pretty sick. But yeah, we went from there and then we went to Germany. We visited my relatives who live there. Oh, nice. Yeah, they own a winery, and it was... Whoo! Yeah. The, that's that's <laughs> the, kind of, the kind of friends and family you want. Yeah, nothing like just going Norway's there. Norway's just... sovereign wealth fund owns 1.5% of the world's blue chip shares. What are... Huh. What's blue chip? Do you know what uh, blue chip is? I believe it's, like, stocks. Like, it's, like, the main, like, uh... Oh, IBM. Like, yeah, like, oh, IBM, is, yeah, Amazon. Market. Yeah. yeah. Shout right. out to Econ. <laughs> um, cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, no, you know, nothing was like going to Germany and like you know getting drunk with your family off of their own wine and then like some great yeah, German that's beer. Yeah, pretty sick. Yeah, that, oh. that is sick. I like that. I like that a lot. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. Americans don't have like real beer. You guys, your guys' beer is garbage. I got yeah, like, I've got pretty garbage like beer in this fridge. Blue ribbon and PBR. And, like, all those things. Yeah, it's yeah, and, and you haven't got your 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 good pilsners and your 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 fine eels. I, like you yeah. have in England. <laughs> no, nothing like that. No, no. My the beer that I had when I was in the UK and France, uh, and, and not, I guess not France as much. It was like, and France, but like all the beer that I had at pubs in the UK and like in Germany too was awesome. Yeah, it's like just so much cleaner. And also, like, do you guys not drink? Like, generally, when you get a can of beer, it's like, not five hundred and fifty mils. Well, you guys do like ounces or whatever, right? Yeah, Sierra hold on Nevada, one sec. I really like Sierra Nevada. Hold on one sec. I'll grab a beer. Case. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of Sierra Nevada, Richie. You can get Sierra Nevada as like the four for six or whatever in Tesco's. <laughs> so here's the cheap stuff I got. It's This is called Rolling Rock. It's Rolling Rock. It's, uh, it's, it's Yeah, and it's 12 It's twelve ounces. The 12 ounces. Yeah, so is that that's like a Coke can, right? Yeah. So 12 ounce in milliliters so 330 i'm guessing yeah that's like so small like you're not gonna get a beer can that size in ireland no <laughs> like it well unless you get like a like an ipa like sierra nevada like richie put in unless you're getting like a craft beer that's like really high percent and maybe a little bit offensive to some people like taste wise yeah um i think yeah like it's uh it's wild that you guys have that and then you call I like know. tall like tall boys or whatever is like your equivalent of just like one of our cons yeah it's, you know I mean. uh, that's a pint it's like 16 ounces yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah i know and so w- wild. whenever i beat when, when i first like went to the uk like you know like i've had like i've been used to like these beers and then <laughs> yeah. i go there and then i'm like yeah i'll have like two pints with dinner like sure it's like two beers and then i was like no it's not yeah it's i am like, like a l- i'm like <laughs> slightly more intoxicated now than i wanted to be with my parents going through the streets of london <laughs> yeah i mean Everything's a little bit better with a cold beer in your hand. That's what I say. True. It's like when I did. True. I'm not sure if you're around, but like my anniversary stream, I'll like. Yeah. October, or whatever. Yeah. I, re- I drank like tw- twelve <laughs> cans or something, playing the spinning goes on stream for you guys. <laughs> I got that's one of the highlights of my streaming career was that day because I was somehow a lot of fun. drank copious amounts of beer, stayed alive, cycled home, and made money <laughs> all in one day. It was clean. And I made chat money, too. Like, yeah. People people made money off channel points in my stream, which was nice. Because yeah. I ended up buying in that day for more than my entire bankroll. But because, obviously, because I made profit, we actually ended up up on the day, including giving away, like, half of all my winnings. It was crazy. Yeah, I remember. I think I, I think I did have, like, one little piece. Or, or I had, like... Yeah, like, one of the spins or something. I had one of the spins, and it, it was a lot of fun. I didn't, I didn't make anything off of that one. That, yeah. You went bust on that true. one. Fun, fun times anyway. Though. Yeah, that was a that was a super fun stream. You got um, 
I'm gonna go put this back in the fridge really quick. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I don't because I, I don't want to drink it because it's only like 1 p.m. here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You gotta keep it cold for later. Say. It's 5 p.m. somewhere, and here it's half six. So if you wanted to crack it, there'd be there'd be no shame. Yeah, I would, but no I'm actually like, I I mean, I'm I want since I'm playing MTTs tomorrow probably for like Ooh. the first time in a while, yeah. I I'm gonna like you know spend some time later this afternoon just like getting familiar with the ranges, getting familiar with like push fold stuff like that. Just yeah, I and I, f I feel confident enough like if I just like get like three hours under my belt just doing pre-flop then like my post-flop yeah. skills from cash will be fun yeah i mean I think that's like the main the main tough point i guess for a lot of people who play cash going to tournaments it's like mm -hmm. short shorter stocks play like they play better than most mct players like post-flop or like 60 to 100 big blinds deep or whatever but when it gets to like sub 30 big blinds sub 40 big blinds that's where like more tournament strategy will like start beating cash game players but i think yeah. it's a lot easier to go from a cash background to tournaments than the other way right yeah I, sure. yeah i totally agree i mean it's it was definitely a learning curve for me when i got back into cash like just trying to you know just staying at like 100 big blinds like it's not like i'm getting it all in nearly as much but mm -hmm. you know since i have did study tournaments for like you know all of like the first half of last year like from march to august essentially it was like mm -hmm. or i guess march to october like it was essentially just mtts like so i i feel like confident enough that i can still like even like have the post flop skills yeah, from tournaments I think, yeah i think you'd be completely fine like especially with tournaments the main idea is just have fun like yeah that, like you're going to boss more than you cash and hopefully when you cash you have a deep run yeah like, that's just sort of like the the thought process the hope and it can be a bit demoralizing, especially if you, like, go on a beautiful run of, like, 30 tournaments without a cash, and you're like, oh, I must be the single greatest MTT player alive. And <laughs> just, just hoping that one day you might even min cash a tournament. But yeah. As long as you're having fun. And as That's long true. as you're not stressing it too much, it's, it's always going to go, like, relatively well. Yeah, I remember I the last day I played tournaments was Super Bowl Sunday and uh ah. it was like they, there was like a whole bunch of like big ones on acr yeah like promos and stuff yeah. yeah there was like huge guarantees and stuff for like low stakes and micro stakes stuff like that and i was like i've been doing well in cash i i, I uh you know i was at home with my friends and we were like you know all of us like just we just played like home games together and yeah. i had been crushing in those and so my mm -hmm. bankroll was peaking and so i was like yeah you know i got we got a lot of money. I'll fire just, a couple of I just, 109s or whatever. I, 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 did, I didn't fire any 109s. Like, I stayed, like, I did not go above, like, 1650. But it's still yeah. pretty, like, it's still pretty high from, like, the last time I played. Like, I think, like, the highest I'd really mm -hmm. go was, like, $4 or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> or, like, I guess, like, $6 or, like, $10 or something like that. Mm -hmm. But, like, I was just like, yeah, I can do it. And I, I lost everything. <laughs> I didn't cash a single <laughs> MTT. Yeah. But that, honestly, that can, like I can have like a week, like even this March, like we somehow managed to break even pretty much in March. But like, yeah. as far as my EV and like cash and tournaments, I was I had like a five percent in the money rate this month, like <laughs> insanely low, like and there was just not much that I personally could have done about it. Like of course, there's always spots you can improve in, but if you're not going to win your big hands, you're not going to win your big hands, and you just have to you just have to go next. You just have to play another tournament, reg another one, or look for the next day, look for the next Sunday, and just yeah. hope that it will be different like if as long as you put the work in you put the study in and hope <laughs> just hope it goes your way and you make the right decisions just make less mistakes than everyone else yeah that's uh, all as, you can hope for as uh Dejan hustler and i have been saying back and forth uh, all, all you have to do in poker is just click buttons better than everybody else yeah <laughs> it's just it's that easy it is literally that easy <laughs> but you, you again, also, enough. better lucky than good so right did um do you have any uh, advice, mainly for people trying to study tournaments? Like, what's the main thing that you study, and what's the main thing that you think people should study? So, from, like, I I sort of came at studying from, like, a zero-cost background. Like, I have not paid for any material ever. I used DTO a little bit, just for GTO, like, um, what I should be doing pre-flop and post-flop, and even just the free version. 
I was watching YouTube videos when I first started out, literally on just what ranges I should play. Um, obviously, if you do want to start paying for stuff, people can get coaches, and obviously a lot of people recommend the likes of BBZ. You've got like Raise Your Edge and stuff for training packages, but I didn't use any of them. The main thing I did was just play tournaments, play with a good bankroll management. Don't like degen all your money away. If you need help, yeah. like fucking seek help. Do you know what I mean? But do your best to, if you ever play even a hand that you think you played well, like tag it, note it down. If you don't have PT4, copy and paste the hand history and you can put it in a chat. You can put it in a, like a converter that makes it a video and send it to someone, send it to someone who you know is better than you. And even though they might not give you the best advice, they're still going to give you good advice. They're still going to say, hmm, this doesn't seem right. And maybe they'll ask someone else. Like my biggest thing was just sending hands to people, just saying, hey, take a look at this hand. Do you think I played it well? Do you think they played it well? Should I be opening this hand? If I'm not opening this hand, what ranges am I opening? And just trying to get information out of friends because even though they're better, usually them going over those hands is still studying for them like they're still gonna have to think through their thought process and yeah. realize what you've done or can do better and that might make them look back on their notes like it's a win-win obviously it's a slightly bigger win for you because you're getting information back but they're still studying they're still helping and as long as you can find like like-minded players or players who are higher stakes than you you're always gonna have access and resources to learning better and that's just the best, like, that's what I've done throughout the entire two yeah. and a half years that I've played poker. Is started off in the Poker Stars school, then I would send hands to Richie, and then I started sending hands to Finton, and then in our, like, ATB chat, and then just to whoever, whoever's interested. I'm always yeah. happy to send hands to, I just feel... for free content, you know? Yeah, I, I totally agree with you there. I feel like, like, until I started, like, talking with other people, like, sending hands and, like, getting other people's opinions, like, I really wasn't growing as much. Mm -hmm. excuse me as a poker player but you know ever since then like it's like hey, hey i hear what they're saying then like you know someone like really like tells me like well y you might be kind of flawed in that regard and then i'm like or you might yeah or like that's just absolutely terrible and then i'm like okay it's a wake-up yeah, call like, instead just of just yeah, yeah. <laughs> i just don't do that or like even when i like i'll respond like in another discord like somebody sets a hand i'm like i give you my advice and someone's like someone who's like higher stakes player than me or like a smarter guy it's like actually you should kind of think this way about it and i'm like oh See, yeah even, even then you i learned a lot like yeah. It always helps. It always yeah. helps. Because even if you might not agree with what they say, it's still another viewpoint. That you, it's another lens that you can look through. You can yeah. go, ooh, maybe some players, even though I might not agree with it, are taking this strategy. And then you can start to implement that in your game. As an exploit, you could say, well, if people are shoving 40 big blinds from small blind versus bottom with queen jack off, I might not do it, but I know people are doing it. So I can call with the ascent suited for 40 big blinds from the, like, from the button because they're not generally going to be shoving the top of their range and then you can yeah. start to like work through exploits yeah and that's kind of like what i've been doing like recently is working on my pre-flop like aggression like i've just i've started ramping up my aggression like too much like i'm playing i'm three betting way wider than i should be but it's more of a experiment than anything else it's just to see are people overfolding in the games i'm playing are people over calling like yeah. What are the better hands that I'm playing? Am I playing these hands? Am I playing offsuit hands? And just trying to figure out what's the best strategy I can take forward and then mix that in with like GTO and stuff. So it's yeah. all just practice, hand reviews, ask for opinions, work out what tendencies are, what's happening to you, where are you losing most of your money? Because you don't need a HUD to find that stuff out, you know? You right. can just see, like, am I losing a lot in the big blind? Am I losing a lot from the button? Am I not opening the button enough? And that can be something you can send to someone if you have a king four suited on the button for 25 big blinds. Most people probably fold it, but it's an open and you might not know it. So you can go, hmm, this looks like a hand I want to open. Let me send that to someone who's good. And then they'll tell you whether or not it's like the right thing to do or not, you know? Yeah. And it's just practice and practice and practice. That's pretty much what I've been trying to do and I'm continuing to do until I build my bankroll to the point where I can actually pay for coaching. Like, I can't currently justify, like, getting Ape Styles or BBZ or one of those guys to coach me because it's just crazy money that I yeah. don't have. But I would consider it in the future over buying a training package, for sure. In my opinion, anyway. I well, think, like, a tailored approach is better. 
Yeah. Wait, what, what makes you think that's uh, that, that's better than, like, watching the training content? Do you think, like, just because... So, I think yeah. a, a lot of training content, especially if you've been playing for a while, is going to be geared towards the newest players. So, you may be paying for resources that you might not necessarily need. Like, if you know your GTO, GTO opening range is full ring from 100 big blinds down to 15 big blinds, the first 150 quid's worth of content in the training course isn't going to help you. And a lot of the strategies about like reverse implied odds or which hands you should be barreling on board textures, like what hands do you bluff with, what hands do you check with, a lot of that stuff that you're going to learn anyway or should be learning as you play is what they're going to try and teach you in those videos early on. Whereas if you get personalized training as already like a somewhat competent poker player, they're going to find like your individual leaks, what spots you're actually missing out on rather than this like grand overall strategy of you should play like this because it made me a lot of money when i did it yeah do you know what i mean yeah whereas i think if you get told personally what you should be doing or what you could do because you don't even need to implement it to play better that'll help you you know yeah no yeah it makes a lot of sense i mean like yeah especially for someone like you who's been playing for a few years like it's mm -hmm. like it's almost like you could get that content but it's not really going to be like the most like plus the, EV thing. Like it's gonna be like it's going to be beneficial, but yeah. it's, to what extent can you maximize value for your money? You know, right? Yeah. Uh, personally, I'm like I I could get my mind changed in a week. If maybe someone comes to me and tells me their idea, and I go, oh, I like that argument. That's better than mine. So I'm wrong. Like, and I could be, and I'm not like a great poker player. I'm okay. I can play well the micros and the lows. Could I play if I was bankrolled for the mids? Maybe. But you know, like I'm, I know for a fact I just have so much more to do and learn before I right. can confidently tell other people how to play. Like I can give my advice, but with like a grain of salt in the sense that I'm like, I'm not like a million dollars in cashes on shark scope or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm you're just doing not. My best. I feel like what I'm doing is well. I'm getting good feedback from people and hoping that it works out. Yeah. No, I feel. I hear what you're saying. Um, do you, are you um, I I know you don't use solvers, right? But are are you like? I are, don't. I would yeah. I would use Pio if I had it, but I don't yeah. have it. So. Yeah, it's one of those things that you just like. I guess you know, not not same same reasons before. Like you can't really afford, or justify yeah, like, like paying I, for I it. I can't. I can't justify paying for like a monthly subscription with like, uh pio or i see a miser like it's something that with a growth in my bankroll will allow me to do rather than what like rather than paying for it and then going broke my bankroll and then never being able to use it anyway you know right yeah, yeah. i, I hear what something you're saying I would use in the future for definitely sure. big three reapers in chat but it helps says, that i have hey like friends that have access to it for me so. yeah yeah, so if you, worst case scenario, you really want need, really want to see what Pio is doing with a certain hand. Mm -hmm. Just trying to refocus get back into the focus. There we go. Yeah, you got that that nice auto focus going. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have to because I move around so much in my stream. I'll sit up here, I'll sit back here, I'll sit over here, I'll sit over here. The lighting changes, and yeah, if I if I don't have auto focus on, then. It, annihilates my my camera quality yeah and i've noticed that i just kind of like i especially during these podcasts like i get insanely rigid <laughs> like i'm just like kind of like this especially because look at this chair it's yeah, it's horrible it. that's it that's a desk chair right there <laughs> it's a it's a university desk chair it's what they give you they're yeah. just like you enjoy it and especially oh my dude on sundays when after i'm done like playing i i am mm. my back is killing me like i need to get yeah. another chair I mean, like, even the chair I use is, like, a really old kind of garbage office chair. And I could definitely uh, look to upgrade. But I don't know because you've seen my setup. Like, you see my bed is there and I am here. Like, there is no room <laughs> for, like, a big a chair. Like, this chair, I have to take the arms off it to fit oh. it under my desk. Like, I have no... And I'm, like, 6'1", so I've got no leg room. My legs are just, like just at a right angle my knees touch the desk like it's not the most pristine setup but it, it works it's a know? setup right if, if if it's what allows me to stream and play poker then gotta do it yeah 
I yeah, I got so, I got like the nicest chair for Christmas. Like my parents got me a really nice one. Mm-hmm. And it's weird cuz like, you know, I I would never have dreamed of asking for a chair, but they got me like a nice yeah, it's chair. Like, it's like who's going to buy a chair? <laughs> but it's like I just really want a better chair, so I got a great one for my desk at home. It's like the most comfortable thing I've ever had. Like the arms like lift up too, which is great Ooh. like for for me like playing guitar or whatever music like i'm oh, playing you can, like lie box because like yeah. then i can sit back it, but with this chair like the arm like i don't know if you can see it but the arms <laughs> yeah <laughs> like yeah it's it's Proper, so painful uh, mm-hmm. Proper, and like school school desk chair yeah so i have to like I, I'm, I'm leaning up like against the edge of my chair every time like i'm playing here but like i had that chair on christmas got it for christmas i had it for like a month before i went back to school and i miss it every single day just gonna like <laughs> driven down to you i mean i know the scale of america is massive so I yeah can't tell if that would be a viable drive so to get your chair like shipped on to you but so it's a four hour drive to my hometown from where i'm at which is not That's bad not bad no i, yeah. I can make it there and back in a day if i really wanted to even mm-hmm. though it would be exhausting but like the only problem is like when i'm thinking of like moving the chair and then like moving out like because i won't have this room next year so yeah. i it you know all the stuff's gonna have to go and it's just going to be a pain to try to pack it but and it's move it. Hustle. Yeah. It, whenever I eventually move out, so mm-hmm. I can, unless I get like a storage locker here, that would just like keep all the stuff that I'm not going to have. Like then yeah. I'm, I'm just not going to have room in my car to take it back, or in my parents' car mm-hmm. either. They, you know, they'd probably tell me take some of the stuff too. Yeah. That's it's fair. just yeah. It's um. I, I mean, you know, I've got to make those, like, cost-benefit decisions, right, as an economist. Yeah. yeah <laughs> All that stuff. Sure. Yeah. All right, dude, I'm going to yeah. be totally honest with you. I am completely exhausted right now because no, of my I COVID vaccine. I a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. I wanted to ask you a quick question, though. We, we were talking a little bit earlier, but and I always ask people something like this, like, in this regard, um, at least with some of the older regs I've had on. Like, I always ask them where they thought they were at, like, uh, or you know 10 years ago if they thought they'd be where they are but obviously you really haven't <laughs> been in the game for 10 years so yeah. oh, no. when, when so when you started streaming did you really think that you'd be where you are right now and where do you think where do you see yourself heading in the next few years i mean i guess in some ways yes because i always had the thought that i would like to stream full time like but when i started streaming it was exclusively as like a job it was yeah. instead of working in a bar and it was going to be fun and i could do it while playing poker or playing games so like it was a win-win um where do i see myself in a few years hopefully not renting off my old housemate hopefully i'll have you know at least maybe my own place to rent or you know my own house that'll be sick i would like to say in the next three years be able to play water nines daily that would be cool yeah um but just generally get better at poker make the most out of being young and travel and try and play a lot of live poker but obviously that again takes money mm-hmm. so it's really the next like two years for me it's like make or break so we'll see how it goes but like that's the i'd like to see myself there realistically within two years i could be off twitch and working at an office job like you never know but yeah. that's what i would that's what i would hope for yeah and one more thing before before we get out of here i keep I forgot to ask you this earlier, but your follow notification on your channel. It's one of the funniest things. <laughs> I wanted to know. Yeah, where'd you, um, what, what, what was that from? Like, that, that stream yeah, in particular? So that was, yeah, that, I mean, so back, way back when, I, I was omega emotional playing poker. Like, Pred Rage, left, right, and center. That's where it came from. <laughs> and uh, that was a satellite. That was actually Scoop. That was the same Scoop year that I satellite into the 109. And that was a, I think it was a $1.10 satellite to get into a 109. And we were like 20 off a seat or whatever, but like super deep mega satellite. And if I won the all in, I was like guaranteed a seat to this 109. And my bankroll was like $200 or something. So like crazy, crazy, crazy satellite. And uh, I got it all in, I think with like King Queen versus, or it was like, no, it was a, yeah, Ace Queen versus Pocket Sixes. And the flop comes like Queen X. The turn comes Queen. So I'm like, one time, let's go, thinking I've won. And then they just <laughs> bink the six on the river and off we are. 
So that's where the no are you fucking kidding me comes from. And it's just all in one clip. It's quite honestly the best, one of the best clips ever. It, it, it's fantastic. And then every time and someone follows. I, I just, yeah, I have to make it my pull notification because it's, uh, it's catchy, you know? People like it. One People time. like the Pred Ridge. And then we get the obviously monster condom for, uh, <laughs> for my, my Magnum, Magnum dong. dong. Yeah, they're oh, always sunny. funny. I do need to like rebrand my or like redo my sub emotes and like hosts and stuff and try and make them on brand. But at the yeah. minute, they're they they work. You know, it does the job. It's it's nice. It's not just your typical like, Bing, X and subscribe to the channel. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, it's a lot it's of fun. Always there. Yeah. All right. Well, it's I want to easier. Yeah, so much easier. I need to I need to learn how to do integrate all that stuff. It's I can show you. I, I, you, I might ask you for yeah. some help with that uh, in yeah. the near future. If you, if you like, yeah, like just message me on Discord. Like, yeah, and I can show you. Awesome. I, I'd really appreciate that, and I really appreciate you cool. for coming on this, uh, coming on the podcast no, today. It's a pleasure of mine. Yeah. yeah if uh, give me something to do. Yeah. If, I mean, if any of you are here in chat watching right now or watching this later, you're not following Pred Poker. Go ahead, give him a follow. He's streaming a lot these days. Streaming a lot on patty power poker and on poker stars and we got scoop coming up so it's gonna be big grind time over here <laughs> for sure so hopefully uh, making the big bucks hopefully yeah not you know uh, that's the dream right just uh, uh win a scoop event win a scoop for event a million <laughs> i hate i i'll be in chat for that that would be the sickest thing ever <laughs> I wanna, yeah even just winning any scoop event would be pretty sick yeah even if it's metal. like the you know the smallest low event. Yeah, like a like, like a one ten stud or something. Stud yeah. eight <laughs> side event <laughs> for three hundred dollars. Still a scoop title all the same. Yeah, scoop titles. Uh, <laughs> scoop PLO this Sunday the dream from Hita Heine. Oh hey, Heine. yeah, good to see you, Tom. Good to see everybody. I want to thank Suited Sevens, Grind, uh, Connor, and Vic the Reaper for the follows today. I really appreciate it, everybody. Uh, and thank Pred for being the first follower of this channel. Uh, <laughs> he's number one. I got you, bro. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and drop the raid on somebody else, I guess. Let's see who's online. I really have no idea. Um, let's Double see. Day. Oh, let's go ahead and drop one to Lime Ricky. Oh, is Lime on? Nice. Yeah, Lime's on. Lime's always a nice person to talk to. And so we might as well. Give her some attention. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Lime Ricky's 71, I believe. Yeah, okay. I think I got that right. Cool. Nice. Yeah, that's her. All right, yeah. So go ahead and we'll go and hop in the raid. Go watch some Lime Ricky uh, playing on poker. Or, uh, sorry, a party poker, it looked like, from uh, the start. Um, Anyways, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Thank you, Pred, for joining me on the podcast. Uh, I heard you, bro. Yeah. And uh, I guess that's everything. I will see you all probably tomorrow. If not, uh, go ahead. And uh, I'll, I'll see you next week um, with my next podcast.